Well, hello, Robo Lawyer. Hello, Mr. Doc. Well, we might talk about what we learned this week in corporate law. We learned about how companies can make contracts, didn't we? And what's that pencil dog? They can use an agent. That's right. So if you want to employ someone to act on your behalf, you could ask Robo Lawyer. Hello, The bibs come out. Yes, and Robo could enter into the contract, but you'd be bound by it. What we looked at was the way a company can enter into contracts, either by using an agent and establishing there is a valid agency, because the agent's either got actual authority, whether it's express authority or implied authority. And sometimes the, the agency arises because the agent is found to have apparent authority. Yes, the company is bound by it. And sometimes the company itself direct the contract. And what's that, Robo Louis? The company can't write. Well, that's right. It, it's correct. In fact, companies used to have uh, what was known as a company seal. And the seal was like uh, sealing wax, and they put an impression in it. And then it turned into uh, paper seals, which they'd stick on. And then they used to use those uh, stamps. And, that, and then it was signed by, countersigned by directors. So that's how the company entered into contracts and was bound by it. But we also looked at the rather tricky issue where someone in the company enters into a contract on behalf of the company and they don't have the authority to do it. They, the company's internal rules don't let them do it. And what's that pencil dog? Uh, is the company still bound? Well, generally, yes, because we've got what's called the indoor management rule where outside parties don't, are entitled to make certain assumptions. It's only if they know of the defect in the power or capacity of the person to enter into that type of contract that the company is able to avoid the contract. You've both done your assignments and the bin. Okay. And the last thing we talked about was the piercing the corporate veil, wasn't it? Where sometimes the courts go behind the entity of the company and seek personal liability back to the people controlling the company. And we do that under statute, the insolvent trading company. So the bed directors can be held personally liable. And there are a number of different common cases where that has occurred. That's where companies sometimes have been used so that people can get around disability, something they're prohibited from doing themselves. They try to see if they can use a company to do it. The courts say no, that's not. So that's what the situation is with the corporate contract. It's What's that, Robo? It is an important part. Well, look, yes, it is an important part of the corporate law course because if we look at a number of different aspects of in corporate law. We look at the idea of a separate legal entity and a company being separate from its uh, members. We look at the area of corporate finance, how a company is able to raise money through the issue of shares or granting the benches fixed charges, the floating charges, those sorts of things. So corporate finance, the whole area itself. We look at the area of corporate uh, management, governments, the role of the directors, the role of the members in general meeting, and the role of the internal rules of the company. We need to know about that. And we also need to know about the company's relationship with outsiders, the, uh, how enters into contracts. We also looked at whether or not in some cases the company can be found to be uh, criminally liable or liable in civil uh, actions. So they're all important. Yes. So I think the company's relationship with outside is very important. Remember about that indoor management rule. And when it applies, when it doesn't apply, that's very important too. And we haven't got much more to go on the course, have we? Okay.
Thank you. 